Greetings, brethren. I just want to cover uh, what uh, Christians and preachers of the past have said about Romans chapter 9, 10, and 11. See how they understood these passages to get a better understanding of what these passages are saying, what it means. I know it is the words of men, but sometimes you have to get taught by those who preceded you look upon um, back in history of uh, those pre preceded you to be taught uh, of um, to be taught before you become the teacher um, but remember these are just the words of men they're fallible but still let's get better understanding of these passages looking to uh, t people of the past, see how they understood it. Um, first, we look on uh, John Chrysostom. He lived from uh, 349 AD to 407 AD, and this is his homilies on uh, the book of the Epistle of Romans. Now, this is homily 16 on cha Romans. Chapter 9, and let's start. Um, where he said he covers uh, Romans 9, verses 4 and 5. And what is this? One asks, For if with a view to the belief of others he was willing to become accursed. He ought to have also wished for this in the Gentiles' behalf, but if he wishes it for the Jews' behalf only, it is a proof that he did not wish it for Christ's sake, but for his own relationship to them. But in fact, if he had prayed for the Gentiles only, this would not have been equally clear, but since it is for the Jews only, it is clear proof that it is only for Christ's glory that, that is thus earnest. And I am aware that you that what I am saying will seem a paradox to you. Still, if you do not make a disturbance, I will presently endeavor to make it clear. For what, it, what he has said, he has not said nakedly. But since all were talking and accusing God... That after being counted worthy of the name of sons and receiving the law and knowing him beyond all men, enjoying such great glory and serving him beyond the whole world and receiving the promises and being from the fathers who were of friends and was the greatest thing of all, having been forefather of Christ himself. For this is the meaning of the words of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came. They are now cast out, disgraced, and in their place are introduced men who have never known him of the Gentiles. Now since they said all this and blaspheme God, Paul hearing it and being cut to the heart, a vex for God's glory's sake, wish that he was accursed, had it been possible so that they might be saved and this blasphemy put to a stop and God might uh, might not seem to have to see the offspring of those whose, whom we promise the gifts and that you may see that it was sorrow for this that the promise of God might not seem to have fallen to the ground which said I'll give this land to thee and to thy seed, that is uttered, that he uttered this which he proceeds. So you see there that uh, the rejection the the Jews rejected. Um, um, he's making saying that Paul, you know, wishes for the Jews only that, that you know. That they might be saved. Let's go on to where he covers Romans 10. 
So this is Romans 10, verse 1. He is now going again to rebuke them more vehemently than before, whereof he again does away with every suspicion of hatred and makes great effort beforehand to correct misapprehension. Do not then, he says, mind words of accusation, but observe that it is not in any hostile spirit that I say this, for it is not likely that the same person should desire the per salvation and not desire it only, but even pray for it, yet should also hate them and feel aversion to them for their cause exceeding desire and prayer which he makes, heart's desire for it is not being free from punishment only, but they that may also, but that they may be also be saved, for he makes great point of of and praise for nor is it from only but also the sequel of it shows the goodwill that he has towards them for for from what is open to him as far as he can forces his way and is contentious to find out some shadow at least for excuse for them and he hath not the power of being overcome by the nature of the facts okay <clears throat> Those prayers for Israel that they might, you know, might be saved. That they're trying to, he says, tries to make some excuse, some excuse from his punishment. But he has to succumb to the facts of the point that um, Israel has rejected the Messiah. So you have John, John Christendom. Um, let's go to Charles Spurgeon. They would, um, I think it's 1832 to 1892. He lived in 1800s. Um, great, pre said to be a great preacher. And let's see what he says about Romans 9. In this section, he covers, this is covering verses 1. Mm. Hold on, sorry about that. It's covering one to three. The apostle is evidently about to make an extraordinary statement, a statement which would not probably that which would probably not be believed. Therefore he gives a preface, a most solemn authorization, imperted permitted to Christian men declaring that he is speaking the truth and also that the Holy Ghost is bearing witness with his conscience that it is so that he loves the souls of his fellow countrymen that though that they can never be yet the, in a sort of ecstasy of love he could devote himself to anything so long as his countrymen might be saved Quoting my kinsmen according to the flesh. In this section, now he covers verses four and five. The apostle never omits an opportunity, never omits an opportunity to magnify his master, though it did not seem to be called for the immediate subject in hand. Yet he put in a dox doxology to the name of Jesus. Who is over all, God bless forever. Amen. How any believers in Scripture ever get to be disbelievers in the deity of Christ is altogether astounding. For there is, for there is anything taught in the Word of God, it is surely that Paul comforts himself in a measure by the doctrine of election, which is fully spoken in this chapter. My subject leads me to read again at the 10th chapter. Okay, this might be a different section. Well, I'm not sure if it's just a different section or a, it's a different covering of these verses. Um, so Romans one to two. He's never thought the um. He never thought about his unbelieving brethren without the deepest match of regret. How far this is from, of those who look upon the ungodly without tears, suddenly. It, down as a matter that cannot be altered and take it a, as a question of 
hard fate, but never troubled about. Not so the apostle. Not so the apostle. He has great heaviness and continual sorrow in his heart. He had just the, that self-sacrificing spirit of Moses that he would lose anything and everything. This is verse 3. For, for I wish that myself were accursed from Christ, for my brother, my kinsman, according to the flesh. So let's start again. He had the just... He had just that self-sacrificing spirit of Moses that he would lose anything and everything if they might be saved. And this is the spirit which ought to be uh, accutate every church of Christ, that the church that is always caring for her own maintenance is no church. The church would be willing to be stored if he could save the sons of men, which feels as if whatever her shame or sorrow it would be nothing if she could save sinners. The church is like the Lord of whom we read. O oh, saved others, himself could not save. O oh, blessed heartbreak over sinful men, which makes me willing to lose everything, if they might but bless and win men to Christ. My kingdom is saved according to the flesh. Um... Um, uh, Romans 9, verses 4 and 5. What dignity has God upon ancient Israel and favor far beyond any of it, us in these particulars? They had the light when the rest of the world was in darkness. Theirs was the law and theirs the covenant of promises. Above all of them it was that Christ came, I say we was a Jew, forever must be that race be be had in respectful honor, and we must pray for their salvation. <clears throat> Romans 9, verses 6 to 7. Now the apostle's getting to his point. You Jews claim to have mercy of God because you are the seed of Abraham, but there is nothing in that, says he, for God made a distinct choice of Isaac to the direction of it, Ishmael, as he did afterwards of Jacob, and then Esau was, Esau was left out. Um, read that. Let's see what else uh, we can pick up here. Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Israel followed after the law of righteousness with many ceremonies and external washings and wearing of uh, flakes, lacteries, and bordering garments. Alas, poor Israel. And God determined that, that they are of all the law, shall not inherit it. And it has made it sovereign decree that the believers shall be justified and saved, and none else. They saw it not by faith, but as of works of the law. So, well, <clears throat> go to Romans 10. Uh, covering verse Romans 10 and verse 1. Let this be our heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel. Sorrows of pardon sorrows have come to, Lord, to the Lord's injured people, even down to this day, and they have been scattered and peeled and rent, and torn in almost every land who does not pity their griefs and woes. Let it be our heart's desire and daily prayer for Israel that they may be saved through the Messiah and uh, through faith in the Messiah whom they have so long rejected. And Paul say there um, 
verse 2, In Paul's day were most diligent in the observance of every form of outward devotion, and many of them dis sincerely desired to be right with God, but they did not know how to, to attain and desired the end. Um, verse 4, For the Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to God, uh, righteousness to everyone that believeth. Christ the ultimatum of the law, and we go to to the law, accepted and protected by him. We present the law all that is can possibly demand of us. Christ f has fulfilled the law on the behalf on the behalf of all who believe in him, so that the curse is abolished for all of us who approach it through Christ. Um, Romans 10, uh, verses 10 to 14. How can there be true prayer where there's no faith? How shall I truly pray to God if I do not really believe in him? For he that cometh to God that must believe that he... For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that digitally digitally seek him. Verse 14 We have we must know that this is we this is that we are to believe and knowing it and we shall be helped by the Holy Spirit to believe it. Um See what else we can pick up. Romans twelve to thirteen. It quotes for the same Lord is over all, rich and upon him, for whosoever Okay. Who whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This was the old prophecy of Joel. The Jews knew it, and it is the new teaching of the gospel. The Gentiles know it. Oh, who would not wish to be in the that broad whosoever that he might find salvation? Uh, verses 14 and 15. So that rightly looked upon the humblest preacher of the gospel stands the most solemn relation towards mankind. His master sends him. His master sends him. And he tells this me his message, men hear it, believe it, and by it they are, it are saved. Happy is the messenger, well may his heart rejoice, even when his soul is heavy, because he has such work to do in his master's name. Um, verse 17, 19. Um, Quotes it, so then faith cometh by hearing, the hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto, en and unto the ends of the world. But I say, did, Israel, did not Israel know? And he says, do not the Jewish people have any time of hearing? Did not the Jewish people have a time of hearing and instruction? Certainly they knew, and they knew also that the gospel was to be confined to them, and they had a warning that they should even be taken from them and sent to other nations. Um, Uh, anyways, let's look on to other people.
John Wesley, 1740, um, what, what, where did he, I don't know, um, sorry about this. Produced between 1754 to 1765, John Wesley. Romans 9. In Christ, this seems to imply the appeal through him in the Holy Ghost through his grace. <clears throat> Verse 2, I have great sorrow. A high degree of spiritual sorrow and sorrow of joy may consist together. Romans eight thirty nine. By declaring sorrow for the unbelieving Jews who exclude themselves from all the blessings he had enumerated, he shows that what he was now about to speak, he did not speak from any prejudice to them. I wish humans... Uh, I wish, um, verse 3, I, w I could wish, humans can not fully describe the motions of the souls that are full of God, as if he had said, I could wish to suffer in, in their stead, yea, to be anathema f from Christ in their place. In how high a sense he, w he wished this, who can tell unless himself have been asked and was resolved the question, certainly he did not then consider himself at all, but only others and the, glo the glory of God, that this could not be, yet the wish was pious and solid, though with tactic condition, if it was right and possible. Verse 4, whose is adoption, he enumerates six prerogatives of which the first pair respect God, the Father, and the second Christ, and the third Holy Ghost. Adoption and glory. Mm. Let's just go. Verse 5. To the preceding St. Paul now adds to two more progress of the Fathers that approach the only man, yea, the Messiah himself. The original words imply self-existent and intimate being, the supreme being of God, and continually blessed forever. No words can dearly express the divine, supreme majesty, and gracious sovereignty, both over Jews and Gentiles. Um, let's go to Romans chapter 10. Verse 1, my prayer to God is that they may be saved. He would not have prayed this had they been absolutely reprobated. Verse 2, they have zeal but not according to knowledge. They had a zeal without knowledge. We have knowledge without zeal. Verse 3, for they being ignorant of the righteousness of God, of the method of God has established for the justification of the sinner and seeking to establish their own righteousness their own method of system with God have they not submitted to the righteousness of God the way justify which he hath fixed um let's see Verse 9, if thou confess, wait, see, yeah. Verse 8, but what saith he? Moses, even these words, so remarkably applicable to the subject before us, all is done ready into to thy hand. The word is nigh thee, within, within thy reach, easy to be understood. Remember, practice. This is emily true of the word of faith which is the gospel. So he calls the word of faith the gospel. 
which we preach, the sum of which is, if thy heart believeth in Christ, and thy life confess him, thou shalt be saved. If thou confess with thy mouth, even time of persecution, when such confession may send thee to the lions. For with the heart, not understanding only, man believeth to righteousness, so as to attain justification, and with the mouth confession is made, so as to obtain final salvation. Confession here applies the whole of outward, as believing does the root of all inward religion. So he says, man believeth in the righteousness, this is justification. So the, verse 13, he quotes Joel 2.32. And verse 16, he quotes Isaiah 53.1, which is prophecy of coming Messiah. Verse 19, Hath not, not Israel known? They might have known, even Moses and Isaiah, that many of Gentiles would be received and many of the Jews rejected. I will provoke you to jealousy by them are not, are not a nation. As they follow gods that were not gods, and scepters in their stead, a nation that was not a nation, that is, a nation that was not in covenant with God. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, some. Uh, let's see what else uh, somebody else says about this. <clears throat> Who can we find? Matthew Henry. Born Matthew Henry was born near Wales on October 18, 1662. Romans 9. The uh, one verses one to five. The apostle concerned that his countrymen were strangers to the gospel. Sixteen to thirteen. The promises are made to the spiritual seed of Abraham. Verses fourteen to twenty-four. Answers objections against God's sovereign con conduct and exercising mercy and justice. Um, verses twenty-five to twenty-nine. The sovereignty is God's dealing with both Jews and Gentiles. Romans 9, 30, 34, the falling short of Jews is owing to their seeking justification, but not by faith, but of the works of the law. Okay, expounds on verse 1, and 1 to 5. Being about to discuss the rejection of the Jews and the calling of the Gentiles, to showing that the whole agrees with sovereign uh, electing love of God, an apostle expressed strongly his affection for his people and solemnly appeals to Christ and his conscience, enlightened to, uh, directed by the Holy Spirit, born witness of sincerity, and he was met, treated as a curse to be disgraced and crucified, even for the time being deepest horror and distress. If we could rescue his nation from the destruction about to come upon them who their absent unbelief to be incestful internal condition of our fellow creatures. Okay. Verses 16, 13, the rejection of the Jews by the gospel dispensation didn't 
uh, did not break God's promise to the patriarchs. The promises threatening shall be failed. Grace does not run in blood nor saving benefits, but always found in outward church privileges. Not only to Abram's seed are chosen, but others not, but God therein wrought according to the counsel of his own will. God foresaw both Esau and Jacob born in sin. Um, Okay. Anyways, let's go on to Romans 10. So it breaks down in the intro. Romans 10, 1 to 4. The apostles' earnest desire for the salvation of the Jews. The difference between uh, verses 5 to 11. The difference between the righteousness of the law and the righteousness of faith. 12 to 17. The Gentiles stand on a level with the Jews in justification and salvation. 18-21, the Jews might known from the Old Testament prophecies. Okay, then he expounds, The Jews built on a false foundation and refused to come to Christ for their free salvation by faith. And numbers in every age to do the same various ways, the strictness of the law, show men there's need of salvation by grace through faith, and the ceremonies shadow forth Christ fulfilling the righteousness, bearing the curse of the law, so that even under the law, all who justify before God attain that blessing by faith, and whereby may, were made partakers of the perfect righteousness of the promised Redeemer. The law is not destroyed, nor the intention of the lawgiver disappointed, but full satisfaction being made by the death of Christ for the, uh, our breach of the law. The, the end is gained, that is, the Christ has filled the whole law. Therefore, whoever believeth in him is counted just before God, and much as though he fulfilled the whole law himself. Sinners never could go in vain fancies, of their own righteousness, if they, if they knew the righteousness of God as a governor of, of his righteousness as Savior. Um, okay, let's go on to somebody else. Matthew Paul. He lived from sixteen twenty four to sixteen seventy nine. Romans nine one to five. Paul professes unfeigned sorrow for the Jewish nation. 1613 proved by instance from scripture to the promise to Abram did not necessarily include all of the descendants. 1418 asserting there is no alteration in God, bestowing unmerited bounty on whom he pleases. 1924 and that he was uncursely free to spend his judgments were deserved either for more signal display of his power and taking vengeance on some. And mercy on calling out others of glory. Uh, verse 26-29, the calling of the Gentiles and the direction of the Jews foretold. According to the Gentiles, I would attain the righteousness of faith which the Jews refused, and the cause of such refer uh, refusal. Let's go to Romans 10. It says, For Verses 1 to 3, 
Paul's prayer for Israel, who were misled by blind, blind zeal, uh, four to ten, the difference between justification by the law and by faith explained from Scripture, salvation o open to all, uh, eleven thirteen, salvation open to all, both Jews and Gentiles, fourteen eighteen, the necessity of preaching to the Gentiles and third. Um, verse 19-20, the God sifts and other Gentiles known before to the Jews. And 21, as their own refusal of his offer of mercy. Um, they have the deal of God, verse 2, that they have a fervent desire to maintain the law of God with all mosaical rites, cer ceremonies, of thinking thereby to promote the glory of God, but not according to knowledge, true and right knowledge. Though it be warm, yet it is a blind zeal. They know not the will of God, or what that righteousness is which he will accept. They know not for what end the law and worship of God under the Old Testament was instituted. They knew not that Christ in Christ in and by whom that the law was fulfilled. Um, verse three. Here. Sh Here he shows particularly a knowledge of the Jews wanted. They knew not the righteousness of God, which see in Romans 1, 17, with the notes there. An abundantly manifest being witnessed by the law and prophets, Romans 3, 21. And the thing very needful to me known as being where any man's happiness consisted, but they were ignorant of. Their personal and inherent righteousness, a homemade righteousness, which is of their own spinning, this they designed to set up in the room of God's righteousness. This notes the pride and accompany their ignorance that is in the hearts of men by nature. They will not go abroad for which they think they have or may have at home. They will not be holding to another that which they suppose they have in themselves. They have righteousness enough of their own working, and therefore they reject and withdraw themselves from that which God appointing. Okay. For verse 6, he quotes Deuteronomy 30. Quotes Deuteronomy 30, 30 12 to 13. Verse 8, he saith, the text in Deuteronomy 13, 14, saith the righteous of faith, which is style of language. Romans 10, 6, he did tell us what he said not. Um, this is the word of faith which we preach. By the word of faith he means the gospel and the doctrine of it. And the gospel is so called either effectively by works faith objectively because it was received faith and proper object of it. Um, in the former verse, confession was set first in the believing faith indeed goes before confession. I believe the psalmist. Uh, says the psalmist, and the apostle after him, therefore have I spoken, yet our faith is discerned and known by our confession. Un, uh, unto righteousness, unto justification, this is faith suspended by Romans 4-5. Uh, with the mouth, confessions made on salvation. Our reverse is that the papists make great use of the text to prove that good works as confession. So he's saying... The prove that the people prove that good works save you. 
and includes confession in that, and are the co cause of salvation, whereas confession is required here, not as the cause, but as the means thereof. The apostle makes faith here to be the cause as well of salvation and justification, because confession of the mouth to which salvation is ascribed is itself an effect or fruit of faith. So according to rule and logic, the cause is all the co of the cause is the cause of which is caused thereby. So he's saying confession is just the effect of our faith, the effect of salvation. It's the fruit of faith. It is not the cause of salvation. Uh, the cause of salvation is the f faith, um, b but um, confession with the mouth is the fruit of that salvation. So, uh, on verse 13, that the Lord overall call upon him is confirmed testimony out of Joel 2.32, and he cites Acts 2.21, um, so he quotes Joel 2.32 in that, too. And that was Paul. Um, go to John Calvin. One of reformist and prophet of Reformation. Um, he lived from fifteen oh nine to fifteen sixteen, uh, fifteen sixty four, and I know he has been responsible for uh, the doctrine, the confusion about um, the predestination and election of God. But let's just. Uh, Put that, uh, put that aside and just see what he says, how he understands, you know. He's probably not wrong in everything, but let's just include him of what he thinks. Romans 10, here see with the solitude and holy man of a BB offenses for his order to be softened, whatsoever sharp uh, sharpness there may have been in this manner, explaining the rejection of the Jews, he still testifies as before his goodwill towards them and proves it for their salvation was the object of concern. So a direct rejection of Jews and the, uh, for their salvation was the object of his concern him before the Lord, and such feeling arises only from genuine love. It may be at the same time that he has also induced other reason to testify of his love towards the nation from which he had sprung, for his doctrine would have never been received by the Jews had they thought that it was avowedly inimical to them and his the affection would not be also suspected by the Gentiles, for they would not would have thought, as we have said in the last chapter, that they become a pot, uh, apostate from the law through the hatred of men. At the beginning of the last chapter, apostle ex express, the apostle expressed his great grief for his brethren, the Jews, he now expresses great love towards them and his strong desire for them, highest good, their salvation.
fällt. Um, see what else we can pick up. Verse 9, that if thou wilt confess, etc. is all allusion rather a proper strict quotation, for it is probable that Moses used the word of mouth by the, taking a part of the holes instead of the word face or sight, but it was not unsuitable for the apostle to allude to the word of mouth in this manner, since the, since the Lord sets his word before our faith, no doubt he calls upon us to confess it. So that's a quotation. For wherever the word of the Lord is, it ought to be bring forth fruit, and the fruit of the confession of, uh, of the mouth. By putting confession before faith, he changes the order, which is often case in Scripture, for the, the order would have been more regular if the faith of the heart proceeded, and confession of the mouth, which rises from it. So he says that seems like the apostle switched the order, faith preceded the confession, and uh, believing the heart, a uh, confession arises from the uh, believing the heart. But he rightly confesses the Lord Jesus, who adorns it, him, and with his own power, acknowledging him to be such a and one as he given by the Father, described the gospel. In an express mention is made only Christ's resurrection, which we have not taken. Um, Verse 10, this passage may help us to understand what justification by faith is. For it shows riches then comes to us when we embrace God's goodness offered to us in the gospel. For we are then for this reason just because we believe that God is proprietous to us in Christ. But let's observe this, the seat of faith is not in the head but in the heart. Yet I would not contend about the part of the body in which faith is located, but as the word, the word heart is often taken serious with faith. With the mouth confessions made on the salvation, it may seem strange that it describes no part of sal our salvation to faith as he had before so often testified that we say by faith alone, but we ought not to count to include that confession is the cause of our salvation. His design was only to show how God completes our salvation. Even when he makes faith, which he implants in our hearts to show himself by confession, nay, his simple object was to mark out true faith as that from which this fruit proceeds, lest anyone should otherwise lay claim the empty name of faith alone for us ought to kindle the heart with zeal for God's glory for out of flame surely he who is justified has already attained salvation hence no no less pleased with the heart unto salvation than with the mouth makes confession you see he makes a distinction that he refers the cause of justification to faith and that he shows that the necessity to complete salvation, for no one can believe with the heart without confessing with the mouth, indeed, this necessary consequence, but not which assigns to salvation to confession. So he say, even John Calvin is saying that it's not a necessary con consequence, that uh, it's not the ascribed to salvation, Confession is not ascribed to salvation. It's not the cause thereof. The cause of justification is ascribing it to faith. So, okay, continue. But let them see, answer 
than uh, they can give to Paul, who at this day probably boasts of some sort of imaginary faith, which, being content with the sincerity of heart, neglect the confession of the mouth, as much superfluous and vain, for extremely perjured to say that there is fire when there is neither flame nor heat. Anyways. Um... Okay, we see in there, he also, on uh, Romans chapter 10, 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall, uh, shall be saved. Um, he describes, he refers to, see right there, testimony of prophet Joel. So he even refers to that. Um, let's go to somebody else. See who else I can find. Okay, this is um, Henry Ironside from the late 1800s to 1950s. Chapter 10, having seen, we have seen vindicated the mastery way of righteousness of God and setting aside Israel nationally because of unbelief and taking up the Gentiles during the present dispensation of grace. The apostle now goes on to show this deflection of the nation as such not in any wise involved the rejection of the invisible Israelite so it's just setting aside the the, the that uh, they gain righteousness because they don't uh, they don't gain favor just because of their uh, nationality but as to gain God's favor you have to believe in the Messiah too or something like that but not to the individual Israel, Israelite but those to believe um, the nation is no longer looked upon as in covenant relationship so the covenant that's what I was trying to say with God nor it will become under a new covenant at the beginning of the Millennium nation shall be born a day, but the same promise apply to individual member of the house of Israel to, as to any individual Gentile. A Roman, in the first three verses, this apostle expresses a yearning desire and prayer for his kinsmen. He long prays that they may be saved, for the, though Abraham's seed after the flesh. They are lost sheep and need to be sought by and found by the good shepherd as those other sheep of the Gentiles. And people think that all they're lost, they do not realize their true condition. Filled with mistaken zeal over God, marked by outward, the outward adherence to Judaism and divine established system. They are earnestly trying to serve God or their fathers, but not according to knowledge. 
that is, they refuse the fuller revelation is given of himself, uh, his mind is his will through Christ Jesus, for their being, quotes, and the quotation, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness, going th about to establish their own righteousness, and not submit themselves to the righteousness of God. Okay. So, um, you see that. Um, see if I can find somebody else. I think that's about it. About it that I can show. Mm. John Gill. From 1697 to 1771, English Baptist. Um. In the chapter we contain about two righteousness of faith in the works, a summary of gospel of Christ, a description of a graceful faith, in the nature, use, and means of it, and several testimonies concerning the calling of the Gentiles, and whereas the apostle knew that this, as well as what he had said in the latter part of his preceding chapter, that the Jews had not attained to the law of righteousness, but stumbled at that stumbling stone would be the offensive would be offensive to his countrymen to the Jews. So that's what he says. So even uh, John Gill says uh, some a few of the Israelites stumbled at the coming on the Messiah. Um, I think that's a bit that I want to cover. Okay. Anyways. Um, uh, well, I just wanted to cover, although this is just words of men, but just wanted to show you of uh, the uh, people of the past how they understood it um and, you know i ho hope this uh, helps you uh gain a better understanding um of uh what uh people from the past have understood uh, and learn from those who precede us or um who came before us. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just hope this helps. I just wanted to show you, I mean, these words of men, these are fallible men, but I just wanted to show you the, um, uh, the preacher of the past, how they understood it, and see that, um, to gain so you can gain a better understanding of the meaning of the passages. But I hope this helps you see how other people understood it. I hope this helps you to understand it better. Okay. <clears throat> Anyways, I, I just want to comment on a funny thing that happened to me. This is the third time I tried to uh, record this. The first time was on my laptop and the program I used um, either malfunctioned or something, and it, the, the audio in it was cut off, so I had dead silence for at least a half an hour of dead silence, 
and even on my phone, uh, this app on my phone, the second time I tried to record it, somehow either I pushed, I picked the wrong button and stopped it or, or something. So it didn't record. I don't know. But I had a hard time trying to get this to record. And hopefully this time it recorded something. <laughs> Anyways, I hope this helps you gain better understanding. Just trying to give you insight uh, how people understood it in the past or the how, how they understood it in the past. People are preachers understood in the past. Anyways. <laughs> um hope this helps you. Hope this helps you and thank you and take care.